Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today we are skinning a greenhouse, one of the four greenhouses we have on the property here. Now by skinning I mean placing a plastic skin over the frame of the greenhouse and the plastic that I've chosen this time is a white poly. I want to talk about why I did that. I have three other greenhouses that have a clear poly on them and they pick up a lot of heat and a lot of light very very quickly. This house I wanted to have the, the white poly on it so that I could get a little bit more shade and I can grow a different range of plants with at least one of my four greenhouses. It may also be a little more useful for propagation when sometimes the early cuttings uh, don't need quite so much light and uh, the white poly does tend to last a little bit longer. I want to show you how I'm doing this. I'm not going to take you through the entire process because I'm not sure how many people are out there looking to see how to skin their greenhouse or want a more specific video than that uh, but I want to go through just a couple of the quick considerations as I get going here. So you can see I've already placed the poly onto the end wall here and I want to first highlight the attachment here. The attachment is done by something called wiggle wire and I'm going to get you a close-up to show you how that's installed. And the nice thing about wiggle wire as a fastener is that it doesn't put any holes in anything so it's easy to remove, make an adjustment and then put back into the channel afterwards. So you can see here that that's the channel underneath and if I wanted to just tighten up the poly, if I found that it was a bit of a loose fit, I can just put some pressure down below this and then relock it. Nice and easy to apply. Now I start with the ends here because the ends degrade less often than the skin on the major frame of the structure itself. So when we change the poly in a couple of years, it might be even up to five or six years, uh, I can probably get through leaving the skin on the ends, whereas uh, when I change the one on the main frame here. So that's why I've done this first because when you fasten it on, you're gonna fasten the outside over top of, of this here. Um, so that's one thing. So I just wanted to talk about some of the things I had to do in preparation for this. First of all, the frame was already here. And, you know, like I say, I have four greenhouses on the property, but this is the first time I'm skinning this one here. When I looked at doing it, I had to look and see, you can see my beautiful shadow there. Uh, I had to look and see whether the frame at the base there, the wood at the base was rotted or not. And in this case, there was some rot on at least one of the sections. So I had to remove that one and replace it and then reinstall that channel. Second thing I had to do was make sure that I have the material. So we went out and bought the poly and some people are gonna ask me, where do you get your poly? Well, we bought it from CY Growers, which is a local supplier of, of, uh, of greenhouse equipment and supplies. Of course, there are three other suppliers you can buy from locally here and it will be different in your location. So that's something you'll have to look up yourself. I chose, as I say, the white poly because of its shading qualities and because it will last a little bit longer. And uh, that is the poly. And I had to choose, you have to measure actually, <laughs> you know, what will fit over the top of the structure. So you have to take a string and run it from that bottom corner over here all the way across the top and then down to the other side to give them a width of this roll of poly. I also had to make sure that I gave them enough length that we could cut off from the ends and then install the ends here first. So as I say, we, we wiggle wire that all in and we just did this section here and then we wiggle wire or we, we applied the poly straight across and then we had to trim the poly. And you can see that the wiggle wire, there's a little excess sitting out there. I'm gonna actually come back with a wire cutter and cut off the extra wire or the extra springs as they stick out on the ends there because we don't want them whipping around in the wind and cutting it. So the tricky part that's to come, and I probably will not show this because, well, it's gonna be a, a bit of a hard process with just a few hands. So we have to pull this all over the top of the peak there and roll it out and then secure it down to the sides. I'll show you after I've done that, uh, but uh, the concern there is wind. Uh, if we get just a little bit of breeze on a big sheet of plastic like that, it can carry a lot of weight away with it. 
Here we are now with the poly pulled over the top of the tunnel here. And this can be really, really tricky if you're doing it on a windy day. Thank goodness today turned out to be a little bit calm. And it was just a combination of rolling out the poly beside and outside of the greenhouse and then just using ladders and multiple hands to pull it over. So the next step would be, and this will be on the outside, is to take that wiggle wire and then lock down the poly to the frame of the greenhouse. And you see, even just the slightest wind ends up carrying this thing. So I better hurry up and go do that. There it is, all stretched over the top and now pinned in with that wiggle wire across the base and on all sides. We did a quick job of it because I'm starting to feel some wind come up here and we don't wanna leave it unsecured during that time. But the next thing we're going to do is unpin the ends and then stretch it a little bit to get the slack out of this. You don't want the greenhouse to be totally tight, but you don't want it to be loose to the point where the uh, poly is flapping in and out with the wind either. That just puts more wear and tear on it. Just gonna show you here. Obviously we've done the end as well. We'll be cutting out the poly at the door there. Getting towards the final touches here, we've installed a roll-up side on the north edge of the greenhouse. So what I have here is a long pipe. We've rolled the bottom edge of the poly on this side around that pipe. And then I can you crank it up. Just like that for ventilation. Now you'll notice that this piece here is actually a pretty simple mechanism for doing it, but it has its downsides too. If it comes loose, it can actually roll down very, very quickly and hurt your hand. So I've actually bought this here, which is going to need a pole installed here for installation. But what this does is it cranks it so that it's held in place and not just subject to slipping and falling and hurting your wrist, which has happened to me. So we'll be installing that uh, shortly and I may do a quick update video on that after I've done this main installation here. The only step that remains now that we've installed this bottom edge, this pole for ventilation, is that right across here, there's, I don't know if you can see it on the video, there's another piece for channel lock here. So this will just be the final piece that secures the center of this, just so that this edge can't flip up with the wind. Here it is, all tightly secured to the frame. This is more or less ready for winter. The only last concern I have is if that roll-up side were to swing out in the wind, it could do some damage to the structure. So there are some metal stays that I can install on the outside of the frame just to keep that roll-up side from swinging out. I will secure that before the winter. Total timeline on the project is one day, preferably not a windy day. And two to three hands, if you can get them, two to three people, if you can get them, uh, will make the job a lot easier. Uh, now, I wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of a structure like this because obviously you're not going to take something of this size on this one's 95 feet long and uh, I think it's 20 uh, 20 feet wide and if you're gonna take on something like this which isn't even that big of a poly house but it's still thousands of dollars and so if you're trying to justify how you would fit that into that biz into your business uh, I want to talk about that a little bit so even if you have the time, even if you have the money, even if you have the space, you have to compare this to what it would look like just to grow those plants in an outdoor bed. All of the benefits of a greenhouse or a polytunnel like this can be expressed in terms of control of the environment, extra control of the environment. So if you want to have an earlier start to your season, you can close it up, trap some heat. And honestly, that's one of the big benefits for me is that I'm able to push my season earlier. Now, if you're Working in a northern temperate climate like mine, uh, and you're in the nursery business, typically you're looking at a peak of your sales in late April going through May and into June. But the problem is that the end of that season is kind of arbitrary and I find rather abrupt. Customers lose interest all at once. The front end of that season, I usually have eager gardeners pushing me for availability of plants all the way through the front half of April and even into March I find people are quite interested and if I had plants ready for them or if I have uh, the plants at least waking up if I can push them to that then I'll have something to sell and I can extend my season by two weeks three weeks a month in some cases in fact in terms of getting my plants started early in the season if I brought in bare root perennials or if I'm trying to get a boost to my roses I can actually get them uh, 
budding out and leafing out in an environment like this at the end of February. I can do potting at the end of February and that can give me you know, a, a month of head start of growing time and really get those plants beefy and ready for the early half of the season rather than waiting until uh, you know, March and April to start your potting. Here our last frost date is at the end of April. Now obviously this will not protect uh, tender plants. So if you're trying to grow, uh, you know, hot peppers, uh, you wouldn't put them in here in the end of February because this is an, un an unheated greenhouse. Uh, but for, certainly for things like my roses, uh, any perennials, shrubs, trees, uh, all of those will benefit from the early wake up that happens in an environment like this. I mentioned the protection from, uh, you know, precipitation. Well, obviously, you know, excess rain, if you don't want it early in the season, we get lots of rain here. Uh, you know, having your plants waterlogged after potting, that's no good. If you have hail, well, obviously see what hail can do to mark up the leaves of a plant uh, early on in the season. So that protection is there. But even later in the season, when you want to cool it off a little bit, you get the extra ventilation in here. You can even string shade across the top of the house. Now, uh, when you get to the propagation season or the early part of the propagation season, I want to start my propagating of roses in say early June and it can still be a little bit you know fluctuating of temperature in the early early June night temperatures can be a little bit low here uh, so that can set back your cuttings if you're in an environment like this you have a house that you can control that a little bit with and you get better stability of temperature and that really is the advantage of a big growing space like this compared to smaller greenhouses and uh, obviously not everybody can afford a bigger growing space like this but the truth is they are far more temperature stable and there's good mathematical reasons for that that I could explain uh, separately uh, but it, it really does it's striking when you have a small greenhouse one of your little backyard greenhouses that might be you know six feet wide and six feet tall and eight feet long and if you leave that in the sun for any length of time the temperature in there will just skyrocket up and then as soon as the sun turns off at night, it will crash down. You get very little temperature stability in a smaller structure. A big thing like this, you get that temperature stability over day and night. Not perfectly, of course, but you do get a better shoulder of your day and your night. And, uh, and you do get the advantages of that in the growth of your plants. Other advantages, it gives you a controlled working area, you know, pleasant outside of the rain where you can do your potting. And you can also get more control over the environment. Like if you cover the floor with ground cloth, you're working on benches, you get to exclude things like weeds. You can't really exclude the pests, unfortunately, but you do get a better chance to spray for them if that's something you're willing to do inside an environment like this compared to what you would be doing outdoors. So, Overall, I guess everything boils down to you get more control and more control gives you more decisions you can make over your crops rather than just letting the weather do what it does to your plants. Uh, the advantage of the extended season is probably the strongest financial argument for this and I'll leave it at that. All right, thanks so much for watching today as I talked about uh, installing a greenhouse and the reasons why you might want to do so. And if you have any questions about this, drop them in the comments below the video.